Hello. Um, I just want to start out by giving a brief tour of Pro Engineer and kind of the different parts of it. To do that, I'll just be going through the simple modeling workflow, the general conceptual idea of workflow that um, will be used throughout the Starbase lessons. Every time you open up Pro Engineer, um, by default, it opens to this browser page, which is actually you're on the internet, if of course you have access to the internet. But on this page, there's um, tutorials, there's discussion boards, all kinds of things to help engineers uh, solve their pro engineering problems or to learn new things. To get a, started with a new part, you can move right up here to the new file icon, or you can navigate through the file pull down menu, file, new. And then this is an important step. You always need to name your files and choose the type of file that you'd like to create. In general, we'll be making part files, and then also, in general, uh, we should give our files relevant names. I always put my name or my call sign attached to it, and then whatever kind of part it's going to be, I'll say this is going to be a cube. You also notice that the words are stuck together. Um, if you try to put a space in there and click OK. Pro Engineer does not like that. It considers those spaces an illegal character. So that's easily solved by just either putting no space in between or connecting words with an underscore. OK, and we'll start. So now this is the main design screen in Pro Engineer, and there are several different areas, lots of different tools. I'll start out by showing the design tree. You can see the name of my part, and then these are a list of the work planes or datums that are available uh, to work on. Work planes are basically where the sketches will exist, and we'll have to select those based on where we want them to exist. They can be um, selected by clicking on them from the design tree, any one of them can be chosen, or they can be selected from the datum themselves. After the sketch is selected, we need to tell the computer that we want to sketch. So we move over to the sketch icon, or the sketch tool, click on that. You can see that the orientation changes, and we enter into this kind of dark background screen called the Sketcher. First thing that always happens in the Sketcher is that Pro Engineer wants to confirm where the sketch will be, that yes, it's on the top, it's got this um, other reference orientation to the front datum. Basically, it's looking for an XYZ orientation that it can create its geom geometry based on. So. We don't have to know that or really care about that too much for what we're doing. We just say, yes, Pro Engineer, this is where I want to sketch. Now, uh, we just select the proper tool for the shapes or sketches that we want to create using the various tools in the sketcher. Since I'm making a cube, I'll choose a rectangle and then draw the rectangle. To make a sketch, I just click it to kind of start and then pull my mouse. I actually don't have to hold on to the, to the left click button at all. I can pull it and drag it out without holding on to the left click. To stop, I left click again and there's my rectangle. If I drew another rectangle, or if I clicked again, clicked again it would be another rectangle. It'll continue to do that because the rectangle tool is turned on. If I want to stop using the rectangle tool, I click on the one by one tool or the selecting arrow and then now I won't be creating rectangles anymore. I want to get rid of this rectangle because I'm only making one cube so I'm going to select it just by putting a box, a selection box around it, and to 
using the cut tool. This is another very useful tool, especially uh, with students learning the program. A lot of times you'll get errant lines and extra little items in there. So if we turn on the Shade Closed Loops button, or tool, you can see that my rectangle was shaded in. If my rectangle is somehow made to be invalid with overlapping lines or by opening up that loop, you can see that it no longer will shade in. Not until I get rid of any of the overlapping segments. I can do that. I'm using a tool that's pretty useful called Delete Segments, where instead of deleting an entire line, it'll just delete the segments wherever it intersects with some other line or line of reference. All right, so it's not going to be a cube. It's going to be this two rectangle type shape. All right, so now that I'm done with my sketch, if I go back to my one by one tool, I can see that, yep, it's valid again. And I'm going to check it in. Every time you're done with a sketch or really any other um, part of your design, Pro Engineer needs you to check it in to say, yes, this is complete. I'm ready to move on. So I click this done. You can see that sketch one has appeared over in the design tree. I can view sketch one or the, really the entire model from different angles by center clicking and then toggling my mouse around, just sort of dragging it around while holding on to the center click button. See from different angles. I can also zoom in or zoom out with the scroll wheel. If it ever gets completely out of view and lost, I can press this refit tool and it'll zoom right back. Now to make this section 3D, remember this sketch right now is just in two dimensions, I need to apply a feature. There's a couple features that we'll use in this series. The one I'll show right now is called Extrude. The Extrude tool basically just squeezes material or pushes material through the shape that you've sketched. And you'll easily be able to see that through this preview. So I clicked on the Extrude tool and I'm getting a yellow preview of what the extrusion will be like. It shows me the value of the extrusion or how, how tall it is. I can adjust that dynamically with this drag bar just by clicking on it and dragging it up and down. I can also change the value in this field in what's called the dashboard. This area up here will have all of the information and options available for the extrusion that I'm working on, and I can change those here. So if I wanted to change the height of it to 100 millimeters, which Pro Engineer is always set to millimeters by default, click that, type that in, enter, and change to 100 millimeters. I can always make adjustments to it. There are other types of adjustments we won't go into now, but uh, that become important later in the design process. So. Just as with the sketch, we have to um, check in or save the progress on our features. So I'll click the green check mark. You can see now it is the feature has been applied and it's part of our model. We have a 3D solid shape, and the extrusion is now part of our design tree. If we expand the extrusion, you can see that sketch one. It's kind of the parent of Extrude 1. That just means that Sketch 1 came first, and Extrude, Extrude 1 is kind of looking at Sketch 1 to know what it should be like. It's the parent-child relationship that you might have heard about in Pro Engineer, which isn't essential to teach, but it's kind of a good, it's a good thing to know about. That's the last thing I'm going to show right now. There's going to be a lot of other uh, details, but that's the general design workflow. You need to 
start a file, name it. That's the first thing. Second, we need to select a datum or a work plane. In other words, a place for your sketch to exist. Next, you need to sketch using the Sketcher environment and the various sketch tools. Fourth, you have to apply a feature or make it 3D. Those are going to be common steps throughout all of the design process uh, that we use for these various models.